find the glue yourself. Mia was struggling to open a bag that held string. The cat probably hid it. Do you think, do we have any extras? If we do, you certainly won't find them under the table. Mia's finger slipped and she dropped the bag onto the table. She flicked at it. There, Sarah said proudly, bumping her head on the way out from the table, from under the table. Now, where do we put those? Sarah slid on a puddle of glue and grabbed onto a chair to steady herself. Popsicle sticks? I give up. I have to do my homework, Mia said, but still her fingers worked at the bag of strain. Sarah rolled her eyes and sighed. Yes, I know it's due tomorrow, said Mia, but how hard can it be? Her hands were now nervously opening and closing a pair of scissors. I'm not doing your homework for you. Now, where are those popsicle sticks? Mia made puppy eyes, sticking her face into Sarah's. I'll find them for you if you help, if you help me. Just then, Sarah's hand emerged from a drawer, holding a pair of popsicle, a pack of popsicle sticks. Yes. Now it was Mia's turn to sigh. I wish I was a bird, then I would have no homework. Don't you wish you were a bird? I'd get eaten by our cat. Sarah ripped off the top of the pack of popsicle sticks, causing all the sticks to fall out all over the place. What should I write my homework essay on? How about making a letter apologizing to your teacher for not doing your homework? I'll do my, go do my homework right now. Sarah made a face and began picking up popsicle sticks. Just wait a second, you're so impatient, said Mia. He continued to work at the bag of string. Finally, it opened. Okay, let's keep work working on this birdhouse, said Mia with a smile. What about homework, protested Sarah. An apology letter can't take that long to write, said Mia. Masterful, really um, an amazing job of juggling, as I, uh, to use that metaphor again, uh, in terms of writing dialogue. So you did a really fantastic job, I think, of switching between three major elements of that scene. The first is the actual building of the, the birdhouse. Um, you, the characters are talking about building the birdhouse, where are the popsicle sticks? Etc. The second thing is you describe the action of the characters. So one character is kind of fiddling with a bag, trying to open it. Another is is kind of constantly pointing around at things. Um, so there is a a combination of those two elements at work. And then what comes in later is the question of homework. One of the characters needs to do homework. She's asking for help with her homework. Uh, the other character is kind of giving her some facetious advice about writing a letter to her uh, teacher about how she couldn't do the homework instead of the, the, uh, instead of actually doing the homework. Uh, is a really fantastic job of weaving together those three elements. Notice how there's kind of um, a, a, a constant, it's almost like the best description I can think of is something like a woven pattern or blanket or something like that where you have really three elements that are intertwined together and you kind of rotate them and what that does to the scene is it gives it a sense of act, of movement and action and intensity um the the certain conversation threads are interrupted by action um the birdhouse is interrupted by the homework uh so there's there's almost a kind of feel of kind of tension in in this in the in the scene and you've created a sense of tension without any kind of tense dialogue itself uh you've created a kind of sense of movement and action i love i thought really the 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 indirect dialogue was so good especially one moment where um they're building the birdhouse and a character one of the characters is prompted i, I apologize i don't remember their names but one of the characters is prompted to say, I wish I was a bird. It's a really great moment where the dialogue shoots off into a kind of theoretical direction. She said, I wish I was a bird. And then she says, don't you wish you were a bird? Now, in the hands of a lesser writer, the other character would simply respond, yes or no. Yes, I love birds. No, I don't. But her response is so indirect. And so incredible. She says, I get eaten by a cat. So don't you wish you were a bird? I'd get eaten by a cat. Wow, that's 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 excellent indirect dialogue. Because it tells us how the character views herself. We can maybe speculate about uh, how the character thinks maybe she isn't clever enough 
to be a, a bird. Um, she isn't brave enough to be a bird or something. She's in she she'd, she feels like she would she would get eaten. Um, so 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 it's a really a statement of insecurity. So we know that the character is insecure in some way, and we could maybe speculate about why that is. But the statement is one of insecurity. So you see how that indirect dialogue reveals something about the character. That's exactly what I'm talking about. It's really outstanding. Uh, thanks, Emma.